YouTube, let's talk about pocket presence. Now, pocket presence is one of the biggest things that separates you from me. It's one of the biggest things you need to improve on. I don't care who you are. You can always get better at this. It is it is a vital part of passing the ball. And if you watch the best passers in the game, you'll notice it when they really buy more time, not scrambling, not drifting backwards, not rolling out, but using their blockers and using their blockers ability in the pocket. So let's take a look at this in practice mode and I will give you the best drill. If any of my old heads are in the comments below that remember the tennis ball drill from previous Madden's, please comment. Let me know you used to do that and help you get better moving in a small space. Not running, not sprinting, but just using that left stick to stay in a small space. Make sure you stay out of trouble, man. And if you guys wanna watch me, twitch.tv slash dub dot. That link is below, man. If you guys are excited about befriending the bot series coming back and things you guys need help with, there is no question that's too dumb. There there is nothing you need help with that's too small. I promise. Anything you guys put below, I want to get better at passing. I want to get better on run defense. Also, man, look at all the befriending the bots videos if you haven't, man. A lot of these can help you. A lot of these uh, still apply to every Madden. They really do. But let's take a look in practice mode because this is the best. And I will tell you guys, the best way to practice this the, that I found. Now, I have the Chiefs here. I'm going to pick. I'm going to pick bunch i'm gonna pick some type of bunch if they have bunch i don't know what the chiefs have they don't we'll try trey y flex all right you guys know i ran that a lot last year we'll send out every receiver and we're playing against the chargers the reason why i like playing against the chargers they have joey bolsa and i'm going to try to find a three-man rush uh that's 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 pretty geeked you know this is a geek three-man rush now the biggest thing i want to tell you about pack, practicing pocket presence the biggest way to make this super effective is we're going to go here we're gonna drag this down and we're not gonna start at the 50. We're not gonna start at the 40, not at the 30, not at the 10. We're gonna put this ball on our own uh, two yard line. That's, that's why I like it, my own two yard line. Why do I do this? Why do I do this? Because I wanna get you out of the habit of dropping back. Dropping back out of the tackle box is something that used to be really effective. You used to be able to throw the same way whether you were 20 yards back or two yards back it has changed in previous years. Being able to use your pocket is way more effective. It's going to calm down those edge threats. It's going to calm down those blitzes, everything. I mean, being up in the pocket is always has way more positives than negatives, man. There's plays where you get sacked. There's plays where your first and second read are not open or somebody sheds really quickly. If you're dropping backwards, now you're on second and 18 or you're on third and 22. And you know, if you get sacked for one, two yards, it's still manageable. You get to third and 20, you can kiss the baby, man. It is over. It is cooked. That is why stepping back in the pocket is bad. And that is why I'm telling you guys, put the ball on the two-yard line. The best thing you can do, the best way to practice this. And this is it. You're not going to pass. You're not going to block. You're, you're just going to stay in the pocket. How long can I survive? And I will tell you this right now. The pass rush on practice mode is absolutely insane. If you can survive against the practice mode pass rush, you can survive against any pass rush in the game. Last thing. Well, not, maybe not last thing, but listen. Recognize what defense your opponent's in, man. Is he a three-man rush type of person? Is it a four-man rush? Is it nickel normal with four rushers? Or is it a blitz-heavy guy? You know, it just depends. And that also changes where you put the double team. Personally, I tend to double team every play. Now, me, myself, I feel like, why are we only limited to one double team? A three-man rush, I should be double teaming two people. Now, I'll show you guys how to do that. Earlier, Befriending the Bots series, I have shown you that, but you might have missed them. So let's tune you guys into this. Now, this is a three-man rush. Now, I know it's a three-man rush. One, because uh, it looks like a three-man rush, first of all. Second of all, I would know that because that is what my opponent has been doing. You know, there's nothing that's going to tell you exactly how many people are blitzing or what type of rush it is, except for just repetition of plays and playing against your opponent. One of the reasons why we like passing every play, so we get into that habit of recognizing our opponent's defense. You know, it could hurt you, it could help you. Some people like more reps, some people like limited reps so they can surprise their opponent. I like to know what you're comfortable with defensively. And I'm going to just give this, because three-man rush, it's kind of the meta early in the year here. And I'll show you guys, man. I just try to stay alive. Now, this is going to be no. I'm just going to snap the ball and just try to stay alive here. We see Bosa shedding. We're going to step up, swerve around, and eventually you're going to just Bosa's going to get you. He has that ability, even though I have Mitchell Schwartz. So what I would do, what I like to do is double team. If there's one edge threat like this, I would double team him. Now, that means we're going to get a double on Bosa. Maybe Melvin Ingram on the left is single covered. 
but I also can ID him. Now this takes a lot of time in the line, but I think it's worth it. And we'll see if we get two double teams. Uh, we just get the solo guy. That's the first guy shed. Not going to avoid that. But you see, we stopped Joey Bosa. But I would double Joey Bosa. I would snap the ball, try to stay alive as much as I can. We see Bosa shedding. Just stay alive. That's all. And I'm not dropping backwards. If you drop backwards, one, you're going to make it easy for, easier for the tackle to go around. You know, it, this is like, as much as we say man is not sim, this is real football. You know, Bosa's going to get that edge. Oh, I got stood up. I got to go up in the pocket. See? Got to go up in the pocket make sure that D-tackle cannot uh, disengage and get me that easily. I'm going to read these doubles. Bosa's shedding again. Step up. Get sacked by Ingram, but you see I didn't lose that many yards. All right? So this is something just you don't want to drop back. That's why I have it so it's the back of the end zone. If you have a skate bar, you can always just do, do that, you know, which is OP. But So that's why I like to put the ball so close. The last thing you can do. Now, this is what I do when I'm practicing plays, when I'm practicing route combos, whatever it may be. I, I go the same thing. Same exact thing. We'll end any play, really. We'll go back to Trey Y Flex. Send out everybody. Oh, let's do the play in the Super Bowl. What's the play in the Super Bowl? Jet Wasp. Yeah, let's try that play. All right, but the play doesn't matter. And what I want to do is sub out the best pass rushers. Instead of Bosa, let's go against Bilal. Instead of Tillery, we'll go against Broth Broughton. Instead of Ingram, we'll go against Rochelle. Don't know who these guys are, but let's see what they have for the pass rush. Cover three, Sky Press. Once again, you see we already have way more time. This guy's shedding, trying to step up. You already have a little bit more time. And you start getting used to how these guys break the double teams, how they, you know, the animations are a little bit better or what the animations are like as we stay alive just a little bit longer. But see what I mean about stepping up? That D end had to come around the edge and then reach and get me. Not just, just get off the tackle and get me. Just those extra steps. If you watch me play, if you watch any player play, as we see our left tackle is going to eventually get beat here, right? If I had dropped back, he's tackling me right now. I'm getting under pressure. I'm getting draw out of sack, anything like that. But these steps up in the pocket, right? Now he's five yards away from me instead of right next to me. You know, and he has to take, look, another, he gets caught up in more animations. He get caught up in more blockers. And hopefully if I was looking downfield, I would have got rid of the ball by now. But you just help your tackle out because your tackles, even though we paid a lot of money for our tackles and we paid our abilities for our tackles, they're still not going to help you all the time. So if you step up and just, you know, use their shield and use their blocking to the best of your ability, you'll be able to get rid of the ball. So listen, try this out. If you want to improve your pocket presence, I promise you guys, this is the best drill you can do because EA has removed the drills. I don't want to get into that or anything like it. But I'm telling you, this will help you and you will see it vastly improve your Madden game.